Hey, hey everybody. Uh, so I built a, so I just got access to OpenAI uh, real-time voice. And I wanted to, I built a agent using LiveKit, which uses uh, tools. So it has Wikipedia tool, archive tool, and Yahoo Finance tool. We're going to overview all that. But I built a, um, a whole course on this, on how I built this. And that's going to be in the comment. If you want to check it out, uh, I'll put that right now. You'll also add this some new tools as well. Uh, and let's let's begin. So it's actually uh, so it took me a while to figure this out, but let's demo it real quick. So let's first run the agent. Uh, like I said, it has uh, it can grab archive papers, Wikipedia papers, and also Yahoo Finance information for any given companies. And now let's connect to the agent. Hey there. Hey, hey how are you? Uh, what tools do you have? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. What tools I, do you have? I can help you with quite a few things. I can retrieve summaries of Wikipedia articles, get information on academic papers from archive, and provide financial details about companies okay, using thank their... You. You're welcome. If you need anything else, so, just let uh, me know. So you can pause it right here, or you can disconnect. Uh, so this does use your API uh, usage, so it's best to like disconnect. Start a new. Ready? Can hey you there. Summarize the latest financials from AMD. Here's the latest financial information for Advanced Micro Devices Incorporated. Ten point five million. So I'm going to quit. You can see that we called Yahoo Finance for that, uh, for a paper. Uh, can you grab the latest paper on agentic uh, LLM systems? Oh, can you, uh, maybe it didn't connect. Let's start a new. Hello there. How Hi, can I... Can you grab the latest paper on agentic LLM systems? I found a paper titled Retrieve, Generate, Evaluate, a case study for medical paraphrases generation. How many authors are on this paper? The authors of this paper are Ioana Bunila, How Amon many of them are there? I sure will. The authors no, how, many, of the how many authors are on this paper? There are three authors on this paper. Iona Bunila, Aman Sinha, and Mathieu Kons. So my, uh, I'm using a Shure microphone, and for some reason, when I do these interactions, uh, it just doesn't work very well. That's what I'm recording with. My laptop microphone actually works better. I believe maybe I can change it. Uh, how do I change it? Manage. Uh, let's try it with this. I think this is that's gonna work better. Uh, okay, yeah. So we'll set it like that. So uh, here we have three papers. Uh, sorry, uh, three tools. But we we can add as many tools as we like. For example, let's go ahead and add a perplexity tool using cursor. Let's go to perplexity. Uh, perplexity. API docs. Let's grab the code real quick. Uh, we need the Python code right here. Let's grab that and let's come here and open the chat. Let me zoom out so it'll be easier to see what I'm doing. Uh, please add a tool, a new tool uh, for perplex. So the search, search, if I can type, uh, get uh, API key from with get env. So it uses OS module. It's already in my environment variables. Um, okay. Uh, don't use streaming responses because I think you know, it has that in there. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, see, we don't need to use streaming. Also, it uses Lama 3 Sonar Large here. Instead, let's use the small model. 
So for speed purposes, okay, this looks like it's going to do it and return the response. Okay, let's apply this. Uh, let's accept and let's change the model number wherever it is. Yeah, there we go. Instead of calling the large model, let's call the sonar small. So now it has this. Uh, I'm not sure if I have to restart this. I think it auto restarts, but I think it like auto reloads itself. But nevertheless, let's restart it. So now our uh, agent has a new tool. Uh, what does it say? Performing perplexity search. So we define it here. Perform a search. Let's say this perform an internet search. Using perplexity AI, let's say that. Hey there. Can you, can you use perplexity to search for the latest NVIDIA price? The latest stock price of NVIDIA is $122.80 as of October 4th, 2024. To get the what, most recent. What is the uh, search again for? What is the Nvidia price? Expect, what is the consensus on what Nvidia price will be by 2030? It looks like there are varied predictions for Nvidia's stock price by 2025. But, uh, but we wanted to know by 2030. Ah, got it. Let me perform another search to find Nvidia stock price predictions specifically for 2000 for nvidia's stock price by 2030 predictions vary quite a bit here are some perspectives optimistic scenario phil panaro a former executive at boston just Consult give me a summary of what people have said just tell me the prices sure here's a quick summary of the price predictions for nvidia's stock by 2030 optimistic scenarios around 800 dollars with some forecasts even suggesting up to $1,000 to $3,525.80. Okay, let me... You can see we just added a tool and just used it. And the other tools are still intact. Uh, uh, like I said, I have created a, a new, co new course on how to build this. It's at my 1000X Masterclass how to build a real-time voice agent with tools using LiveKit and Python. Uh, it's below, you can use it. Uh, you can watch it uh, if you become a patron. I'll make more videos on this, but let's talk about how I actually did it as in a gist. So first you have to go to LiveKit Docs, and when you go there, um, there's the OpenAI real-time API, go to the overview, and here is the quick start. You have to go to speech to speech. It's gonna take you to the beginning. Essentially, you need to open a LiveKit uh, account and then go to Sandbox, create a Sandbox like this and create this voice assistant front end. And then it's going to give you uh, some code to install LiveKit CLI. After you do that, you start uh, a, a, you create an app. When you create an app, it creates a sample like this. And then uh, to use the tools, you need to use LLM. This LLM that is imported from live with agent.import. And then you define your, you, you create an LLM function context as fnc underscore ctx and use the fnc underscore ctx dot callable to give it a name and description just above the function. So you don't have to define a JSON schemas. You can define your function. Another caveat is that, so you, you do this for each one of your uh, functions. So that's nice. Actually, it's very really convenient. And to be able to use Python is super convenient. So LiveKit kind of plays the WebRTC uh, middleman. The, the OpenAI implementations are in only in JavaScript right now, only using WebSockets, but LiveKit actually turns it into a super low latency WebRTC. But the caveat is that your functions should always return a string. So even if you have a mathematical function, make sure that your return uh, you're returning that as a string, okay? Because there's an assertion somewhere in LiveKit's uh, code base that actually checks to make sure that it's a string. So uh, essentially, we can uh, do complex things. Like, for example, let's go back and connect. 
So also this, uh, let's say the Wikipedia article only returns the first 500. Um, but we can we can do something like this maybe, like retrieve the Wikipedia article and make a search about it on uh, perplexity. Let's, let's try. Hello? Can you, please, uh, can you please retrieve the analytical engine Wikipedia article and from what you see, find the most important element in it and perform a perplexity search with it. Okay, after telling me what element that you're using, like a topic or concept, and then perform the perplexity search and summarize it to me in a single sentence. Okay, it's calling. The most important topic in the article is the concept of the analytical engine itself, uh, designed by Charles Babbage. Let me perform the search for Char the perplexity search reveals that Charles Babbage's analytical engine was a revolutionary mechanical general purpose computer. Okay, let's it performed first Wikipedia search, uh, and then after that performed uh, performed. Uh, Charles Babbage analytic, analytical engine uh, search on perplexity. <clears throat> let's give it another tool. Uh, let's use cursor to write this time. Uh, give the agent uh, ability to write txt files. Uh, txt files. Let's let's use this. We can I guess get it to write HTML as well. Let's restart this. So now, okay, it's starting. Let's reconnect. Hello there. Can you, uh, can you please get the financials for Nvidia and AMD and write a summary comparison of it into uh, in a summary.txt file. It is performing the functions. I've gathered the financials for NVIDIA and AMD summary. and yeah. created a comparison summary in a and file named summary.txt. Feel free to check it out. Just can, you, let... can you please write a paragraph summary of it uh, as you interpret the result? Certainly. Here's a concise summary. NVIDIA Corporation and Advanced No, please write, the, write this to file instead. There we go. It, it wrote a summary of it. Comparison of NVIDIA and AMD into a file. This is pretty remarkable. I mean, I can't believe it. I mean, this uh, really opens up. Uh, this is no different than Star Trek's computer. You give it the functions you want, and it just does it for you. Uh, it's unbelievable. Let's give it a read file function. Uh, Please add a read file function. And like I said, I created a, a whole chapter on my 1000X cursor course uh, on how to build this. I will also be exploring how to build it with just vanilla uh, OpenAI API, uh, but like it just makes your life so much easier. You can build a UI on top of this too. I'll be exploring that as well. Okay, so now it's doing, it's adding a read file. So now we can actually uh, make it read its own code and explain it to us. Let's do that. Hey there, how's it going? What can, can you I please read the agent.py file and tell me what it does? I'll need to access the agent.py file in order to read its contents. Let's proceed with that. Could you please provide the file or let me know if it's in the current directory? Do you have a read, read text file uh, tool or not? The agent.py file is a script that defines a multimodal agent using the LiveKit framework. Here's a rundown of what it does. It imports necessary modules and libraries, including livekit.denvuf and OpenAI uses OpenAI. Loadout settings and workers. Well, give it a give it a more meta summary of what it does and what it's capable of. Certainly, 
The agent.py script sets up a multimodal AI agent capable of interacting through both audio and text. It uses various libraries and plugins, such as LiveKit for real-time communication and OpenAI for What language. are its capabilities? The agent.py script defines a multimodal AI agent with several capabilities. One, it can connect to specific rooms based on a sandbox ID, allowing it to accept or reject job requests. No, as far as, describe it as far as the agent's uh, capabilities. The agent.py file defines a multimodal AI agent with the following capabilities. One is real-time interaction. It can connect What are to this agent's tools? The agent in the agent.py file is equipped with several tools that allow it to perform a range of functions. One, Wikipedia article retrieval. Fetches a summary of a Wikipedia article based on a given title. Archive paper retrieval. Retrieves information about an archive paper based on a specific query. Okay, well, what if, I, what if I told you this was actually you? Haha. -ha. Well, that makes sense, given all the tools and functions listed in the agent.py file. It looks like the agent is designed to be quite helpful and versatile, just well, like... How does that make you feel? It seems like there's a bit of confusion... I'm actually an AI language model capable okay, thank you. of. We understand. You're welcome. So, listen, here is a system message. I actually use the one that OpenAI provides. Uh, also, also, the additional instructions for the tools that it has, although it doesn't have to have it. Oh, and I, and I forget uh, to, with tools, when you apply tools, you do have to do the tool choice. Here it's set to auto and under real-time model. I forgot to mention that earlier. So, I mean, to me, this is uh, incredibly remarkable. Um, it's just, uh, I'm in a bit of a disbelief that we can create things like this. Uh, like I said, I'll be exploring this more. Uh, this is like your own personal agent, you know? Uh, it runs in a sandbox uh, from LiveKit. You can add any uh, type of function to it as a tool, and it'll it'll do it right uh, in a real time conversation. So it's lovely, really. I can't wait to explore it more, and I will be exploring it more. Let me know what you think. And like I said, if you're enjoying my content, you can find uh, all my free uh, AI coding videos at my website at cohive.live. And if you do decide to become a patron, you can download the code files for each one. For example, the fast transcriber, which transcribes 10 hours of video in eight minutes. Just click on it. You can watch the video. I always review the code. And you can download the code real quick as well. So, uh, and I also have my 1000X Masterclass with 22 chapters now. You can watch the first chapter for free and preview the first two minutes of each chapter, the last chapter is uh, how to build a real-time voice agent. This one, actually. So there's over 11 hours of content there. Well, thank you for watching, you know. Let me know uh, how you like this. Take care, everybody.